Jake, if you, I've read somewhere where you, you like Jimmy Butler's story. What is it about his story that you like? Uh, just the fact that he's an underdog. Um, you know, there's not really a lot of hype behind his name. But he got something that you can't that you can't take away from. That's his hard work and his dedication to the game. Uh, I try to carry that same mindset, uh, not because of him, just because that's who I am. And um, just the fact that he worked for everything he got uh, at his place in the NBA. Now you know, coming in, 30th pick. You know, he's an all-star. You know, uh, I see myself as being one of those underrated guys that can have a lot of potential and have a, a big impact on the team when I get to the NBA. How many workouts have you done so far? Uh, this is my second one. Where was the other one? Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. What's the feedback you got? I mean, it's only two, but what's the feedback so far? Uh, great workout. Uh, <laughs> I shot. I could have shot a three better in Phoenix. I shot it well, hit a threat today. Yeah. Uh, but everything has been great. You've been working out in Vegas. What, yeah. what type of things, uh, have, or how has that been beneficial to you? Oh, it's been very beneficial. Um, not just the one on, like the one on O work. Uh, but just the, like the competitive three on three, five on five, just being around other guys that's trying to reach the same goal as you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hungry dogs out there and you don't want to be training with uh, Chihuahuas. You want to be in there with pit bulls, baby. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm there. Uh, a lot of great players out there. You know, we, we battling and we pushing each other to new limits every day. It's been great so far. One of those guys is a local guy, Troy Brown from yeah. Oregon. What are your impressions of him? Uh, Troy, he's, 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 very, he's very mature. Uh, for his age, you know, him being very young at 18, he has a very high IQ, uh, a lot of upside. He's got a lot of potential to be a great player. Uh, and I feel like whoever gets him is going to get a, 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 great, a great steal in the draft. Can you maybe explain uh, or shed some light on your background and, and growing up and kind of maybe some things that help shape you? Uh, well, growing up, single parent mom. Uh, I'm the youngest of three boys. Uh, so just watching her work hard day in, day out, day out to provide for our family. Um, so she never had to like tell me to work hard. It's just something that's been instilled in me since I was little. There'd be times where I wake up, she'd be going to work, she'd get home late at night. Uh, but she had to miss my basketball games. But it's, yeah, I, I, I knew I knew it was for a purpose, you know. So uh, and my brothers, they they guided me, they kind of raised me um, to be the man I am today uh, by instilling responsibility in me, discipline, and just. Stay true to myself, you know. Uh, never try, never change for anyone, um, and just continue to let God control the things that I can't control. Was there ever a time where you strayed from that, where they had to get you back in line, or she had to get you back in line? Uh, from staying true to myself? Yeah. No. Or just you know, staying on the right path. Oh yeah, most definitely staying on the right path. You know, as a kid growing up, um, it's, especially single parent, you just you just got your brothers to watch out for you. Right. So you, you're gonna you're gonna ha have times where you go out and you uh, play with your friends and stuff, you get in trouble in the neighborhood, but that's just regular stuff growing up as a kid. So like, when I was younger, cause both of my brothers are like a good amount of years older than me. So they just try to tell me whenever they leave, make sure I can be able to hold the house down for, for my mom. So by the time they were able to leave, I was able to do that. <clears throat> What'd your mom do for work? You said she left early and came home on a whoop. Well, at first she was a, a center director at the uh, kinder care. The company is like a daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, but now she's like she handles their booking and financials. And and she she was an athlete too, right? Did she play basketball? Yeah, she played basketball. Uh, she actually kind of molded me into the basketball player today, uh, just by being all around. You know, being able to rebound, being able to pass, being able to shoot, being able to talk, lead the team. Uh, so I could get kind of those traits from her. And where'd she play? Uh, she played in high school. Okay. Oh. Says so she played at Grambling. Yeah, yeah. resident guy. She oh, played at Grambling. No, 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 no. She wishes. <laughs> she probably could have, honestly. She's she was really good, all state. <laughs> Jacob, defense is one of your fortes. Where did that kind of develop? And you know, like a lot of players, are kind of attractive to the offense. Why did defense become attractive to you? Well, um, going into college, uh, I wanted to go to a school where it would it would challenge me, um, not just become a great offensive player, but both sides of the ball. Uh, my dad, I, I still have a great relationship with my dad. He he always told me, I, my favorite player used to be Kobe Bryant, but he always hated Kobe Bryant because he said he never played defense. <laughs> like he made all first, all team defense multiple times. Like, but he just he wanted me to be like a Scottie Pippen. He liked Scottie Pippen. That was his favorite player, and he dominated on both sides. Uh, you know, it's times where great offensive players, they can go get you a lot of points, but sometimes they can't get you stops on the other end. So just being able to score and get a stop, you know, uh, 
And also, when I went to Cincinnati, that just fed into it. You know what I'm saying? So having a coach like Coach Cronin being able to teach me defensive reads and, and how to read offensive sets and things like that, it just helped me mold me to the player I am today. Did you, uh, was there ever a point in your career where you kind of noticed the NBA tra transitioning to, you know, positionless players, and just being a player? Well, I would say the first team, like now the Warriors, I would say the Warriors started it uh, first. And then you kind of see like the Celtics, they're trying to trying to move to that role too. And a lot of NBA teams are now uh, having smaller four men, stretch five men, uh, or athletic rim runner five men, and four men that can do everything. Uh, and having six, five, six, 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 seven guards, wings, forwards, whatever you want to call them on the court that just make basketball plays, you know. Uh, I feel like having a size at a lot of positions and having the versatility at a lot of positions helps you, gives you the best chance to win. So you feel that kind of fits your? Uh, your most role? definitely, most yeah. definitely, yeah.